Y'all don't understand the struggles of being a black man out here in America and not knowing whether or not you're going to make a home to your churn every night because of the police gunning you down. But don't y'all be out here gunning each other down? Okay, but we ain't talking about that. Hell, don't y'all be rapping about killing each other in music? We ain't talking about that either. We can talk about killing each other in rap music, but we don't like the police killing us. Stay on subject, woman. You brought up your kids. Tyrone, you don't even see your kids. And then, yeah, I be trying to see my kids. You know my baby mamas be tripping because I don't want to be with none of them, so they be holding my kids from me. You know that. Okay, but your baby mama saying you don't give them no child support either. Okay, but I still be going out my way to try to see them. They live five minutes from my house, Tyrone. That is out my way, woman. See, y'all, that's what we don't like y'all black women's mouths. Y'all run y'all mouth too much. Y'all always bringing up stuff that's irrelevant. Well, was you cheating on me, Irrelevant? I only cheated on you 10 times. You act like I do it every day, bruh. See, that's why we date women of other races, man. Hey, boo, hey. It is Lexus Exodus, leader of the Black Women Exodus. How are y'all doing? And like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe, please share, please comment in the comment section. Let me know that you're listening. Also, if you enjoy listening to my content on the go, the show is now available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for audio listeners. Go check out my Patreon community where you can get access to bonus episodes and exclusive content and also a private community of like-minded, divested women. It is linked below. Please also follow me on social media platforms. You can check me out everywhere on all platforms at Lexus Exodus. You can find all of this information in the description below. This is another installment of my series called The Blackistan Zoop, where we both have the dusty derelicts, crazy creatures and animals in Blackistan. Tonight, I want to talk about your bird brain. So your bird brains are goofy, sex-starved, love-obsessed, hypnotized dummies. And they prioritize peeing over everything. So they think erratically and irrationally. They think illogically. And they are dusty worshiping. And instead of seeking partners who protect and provide and problem solve, and looking for mates who provide safety and security. They're concerned about sex and they are only concerned about whack love. This idea about whack love and these mythical unicorns that they claim exist. So he may be unemployed. He may have multiple baby mamas with several women. The Dusty may have a mile long criminal record. He may make minimum wage throwing boxes at FedEx. They still fall head over heels in love because of the BBC and the idea of whack love. Okay, so now that we know the profile of these bird brains, let's look at a few examples that illustrate this. So I want to pull up this first post that talks about this and that really illustrates how dumb and how dysfunctional and how delusional these women are. Okay, so this woman posts, my advice for women who can't orgasm during sex. Next time you and your man are having sex and y'all been going strong for 10 minutes with no orgasm for you at all, tell him you have to use the bathroom, take a shower, then go in the kitchen and make you some coffee. While the coffee is brewing, download a dating app. Drink it. Then go back in the room and put your clothes on. Get in your car, get on tagged, and find a man who is 26 to 28 in a terrible living situation who smokes weed and probably sells it who works in fast food part-time, but emphasizes that he does a lot in that job to justify why he is so tired all the time. Go to his house, sis. Your orgasm is there. He holds the key. He finna tear your ass up, sis. 
I can't even explain why the world is how it is, but I promise your orgasm is within that man. The worse his situation is, the better. If he lives on a couch and is commander of the living room in his grandma house, he finna put something scary in your life. If you don't even have a fast food job, but he works in a factory for weird-ish, like he the nigga that dies individual Fruit Loops, sis, he's the one. Every time you have a red Fruit Loop, that's me. I'm the red Fruit Loop man. <laughs> Pick him, sis. He got the key. The best orgasm of your life is in the pants of a man who puts produce stickers on avocados at your local supermarket. You're effing welcome. Signed, Kaina Williams. Oh, Lord Jesus. Now, we done kicked off the show with the doozy. Do y'all see this mess? Do y'all see this nonsense? This is that Blackistan bird brain bullshit. I've seen this toxic rhetoric encouraged so much and promoted so much throughout this community. These girls love to tout about how the best peen is broke peen. The best dick is struggle dick. Where'd they do that at? So they are out here promoting sleeping with, giving poom poom to, and potentially having children with niggas that work fast food, that are broke, that sleep on their grandma's couch, y'all. Because a Dusty being poor and struggling equates to him being better in bed. Really? Do y'all hear this backward ass ish? Y'all worried about the wrong shit. So me personally, money makes me come, and I'm not being facetious. I'm so serious. I can't orgasm unless mentally I'm feeling safe and secure. I just can't. There's a major mental component for me. Security makes me climax. I'm very vocal about how I never reached that point with a man until I divested from Blackistan and met my current husband, who is a protector and provider. And as a matter of fact, that is instinctual for most living, breathing beings Even in the animal kingdom, scientists will tell you that animals and shit will strategically look for the best provider and protector to mate with because it's a part of natural survival instincts. So even the damn animals will be selective about who they partner with because they understand, hey, the person that parents my children, he needs to be able to provide resources and to provide safety and security for my offspring. But for whatever reason, Black women have no semblance of survival instincts. Apparently, we have less common sense than the damn animals. Mammies in particular are so damn sex obsessed. They don't even care if the penis comes with poverty, if it comes with STDs or diseases, if it comes with illegitimate children that you struggle to raise and rear on your own. Child, she said it don't even matter if it comes with him living on his damn grandma's couch. As long as the sex is good. Sex is good, though. The BBC. Seriously, y'all, I can't enjoy it if it doesn't come with security because penis does not pay bills. It don't provide a roof over my head. It doesn't put food on the table. So who cares about so-called good sex? And these girls think promoting ish like this is funny. I don't think this is funny because I know that these chicks really believe in this mess. And this is why the community is in such a poor state that it's in in the first place. A wise woman once said, broke boys don't deserve no pussy. I believe in that wholeheartedly, but this is your bird brain mammy though. Just making foolish decisions over trivial surface level things like sex. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? (laughs) 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 It's, that was a, that was a nice one, okay. I'm out here. Uh oh, Richard. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Keep black women's names out your fucking mouth. I said, keep black women's names out your fucking mouth. Seriously, guys. Are you tired of all the negativity and toxicity Black women are subjected to in media, music, and online? We are ridiculed, denigrated, and berated daily, and I'm sick of it. That's why I created a private safe space for Black women 
that focuses on divestment, development, and self-empowerment. My private Patreon is for Black women only and is a community where we are affirmed, encouraged, supported, and uplifted. For the cost of a coffee, get access to my Patreon community, which consists of a private Discord group to connect with like-minded Black women, add free bonus content, exclusive private lives, and much, much more. You can check it out on patreon.com slash Lexus Exodus. The link is also listed below. Shout out to my exes. Okay, so I want to look at this next example of what I'm referring to and read this next post that illustrates how idiotic and how silly and how dumb these girls are. So let's read this next post. Okay, so this woman shows a screenshot of her husband's contact in her phone and his name is Lord, y'all. Okay, and she posts a screenshot with the following caption. So she says, this is my husband's contact in my phone. I'm showing you this because I wanna share some tips with the wives. Sometimes you need to do little extra things to remind yourself to stay in biblical order. My husband's name in my phone is Lord. This is to remind me whenever he calls me that that's who he is to me. He's my Lord. God gave him lordship over me. He's to love, protect, and care for me. And I am to honor, respect, love, and submit to him. Oh, my Lord. Child. Y'all, I used to be very, very religious. I was raised in the Baptist church. And I'm talking about Sunday school, uh, Wednesday Bible study, Sunday service and all. But I'm not any longer. And I don't knock anyone else's beliefs, but I'm very curious. When did it become okay to call other human beings the Lord? Can a Christian in the comments let me know? Add some clarity to this, because this sounds blasphemous to me. This is not biblical order, like she says. This is black male worshiping. And shout out to Sinji, who often discusses how the community promotes the worship of black men. Black is is like a cult. Okay, and the cult centers around the adoration and worship of Dusties. And I firmly believe that's why they're so adamant about insisting that Jesus is a black man and why every auntie's and grandma's living room has a, a big old picture of Jesus as a black man on the wall. It aligns with the culture of Dusty worshiping and centering Dusties. This is what the bird brain mammies do, though. Talking about she's sharing tips with other wives. That's exactly why I had to leave the black church because it's the blind leading the blind. They all like this. A lot of these bird brain elders in the church are like this and promote dusty worship as well. Submission is not calling your husband Lord. It's not acting like he's your God. Even the dusties understand this. And if y'all look at this post, even in the comments, they're dragging this dumb woman. Okay, so I want to keep going and I want to look at this next example that illustrates how idiotic and stupid these women are. And I want to talk about bird brain rapper Sukiana, who also demonstrates how sex obsessed and digmatized these bird brains are. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. So I was just thinking, I can never work in a prison house as a guard because I'm going to be. Yeah, that's my type all up in there, baby. I'm sucking on something. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Y'all boyfriends can't eat cook. Like, have you ever had a brick? Have you ever had bono? Are you dumb? So I was just thinking, I can never work in a prison house as a guard. Cause I'm gonna be. Yeah, that's my type all up in there, baby. I'm sucking on something. Are you dumb? Are you dumb? Y'all boyfriends can't eat cook. Like, have you ever had a brick? Have you ever had bono? Are you dumb? Oh, my Lord. And the caption says, I couldn't be a prison guard. I already know I'm getting pregnant. Are you dumb, Suki? Are you dumb, for real, girl? Do you see this mess? So she's talking about she couldn't work in prison because she couldn't resist the dust. She wouldn't be able to restrain herself. And she couldn't avoid sucking pain. And she would become pregnant. Because we all know there's nothing better than having sex with thieves, rapists, and M-worders. There's nothing better than riding doo-doo peen and getting pregnant by someone who makes license plates for two cents an hour in prison. Okay, girl, whatever you say, girl. 
And she's talking about how they can cook good. She mentions a brick and something called a bona, I think she says. That's that hood Blackistan nigga Lee's talk. I'll try my best to translate this, although I am from the hood. I wasn't that deep in the trenches where I was familiar with prison cuisine. I believe a brick, though, is ramen and some other scraps that the prisoners can come up with that they nigger rig and utilize to make meals in prison. I don't know, y'all. Child, I don't know. This is beyond me, y'all. Maybe somebody can explain below who's more familiar with this foolishness. But this, this is what I'm talking about. So damn dumb. Talking about she wouldn't be able to resist the convicts in prison. She wouldn't be able to resist procreating with them. Okay, so I want to keep going and I want to look at this next example and talk about this class. So this room full of women attending a deep writing class. So let's watch this and then we'll... Riding for Rookies is a beginner level deep riding class and we are coming to a city near you. Our summer tour dates have just been released. If you go to the main page, click on the Lake Tree link for the tickets and cities, and hopefully we'll see you in a city near you. To expect from Riding for Rookies. Real hot girl shit. You forgot your knee pads? I did. And what you end up bringing for, for class? A baby pull up. Baby pull up. And, and a whole kind of baby pull up. It's my pussy. I can do what I want. Hmm. I'm a big girl now. It's my pussy. I can do what I want. Hmm. I'm a big girl now. Y'all. <laughs> oh my gosh. A secondhand embarrassment. This don't make no mother sense. So the audio was unclear on her post. That isn't from my end. The original audio is like this. I'm not sure why it like cuts in and out like that. But for you guys who are having trouble following along and for our audio listeners, we're watching a room full of women humping the ground, attending a class, being taught how to ride dick. Okay. And in the second clip, apparently... The instructor advises them that they're supposed to bring knee pads to this ridiculous class. And some of the ladies forgot their knee pads. So they use in the baby's pampers instead. And they didn't wrap damn diapers around their knees so they can take this class. Y'all, she, she has a whole tour. She's going all across the country, even to Toronto. So she's going abroad as well to teach black women how to ride pee. Okay, so the baby don't got no damn diapers now because these bird brain ass women use them for a D riding class. Lord, if you ready to come back, just say that. Just say that. We, we got to be at the end of times right now. Is this the Twilight Zone that we're in? Are we in a simulation or something? Is this the Sims? Because this is starting to feel like a damn SNL sketch right now. This cannot be real. But this is your bird brain bum bitch. This is the antics that they engage in. Worried about the wrong ish. What did I say? Everything centers around sex in Blackistan. They so damn sex obsessed, digmatized, and only prioritize penis. So they don't prioritize being protected. These women don't prioritize being provided for. Not being safe and secure. Just sex. Just sex. They sit here paying for classes to learn how to ride the peens of the least educated, least employed, least successful, least performing groups of men on earth. Child, where'd I do that at? I remember being back in Blackistan and telling a former friend how during sex, I like to dress up. I like to get dolled up and wear lingerie and to be sexy and how I didn't like to wear bonnets or like house robes or anything like that. You know, I would get dressed up and I like to look like a Playboy bunny, basically. And I remember my friend being like, man, fuck these niggas. I remember her saying to me, they lucky to even get access to us sexually. They gonna get what they get. And if that comes in a bonnet, who cares? They lucky to get a whip. So he better be happy if that comes with no makeup and a house robe and a damn do-rag. 
<laughs> and I was so confused when she said that. I was very young and it didn't make sense to me then. But now I totally get it, especially now that I'm divested. You mean to tell me, Mammy, you're muling, working a nine to five, cooking and cleaning, rearing and raising the children, being Miss Corporate America by day, super mom by night, social justice warrior on the weekend, because you got to defend the community as well, stand in the line of gunfire for these dusties. You wear both the pants and the panties in the white community. And you mean to tell me you taking D writing classes too on top of that? Where do they do that at, y'all? Where, where, where? Other than Blackistan. The gag is they're doing all this and the Dusties are still online dragging them. If you bored and you have a moment, look this mess up on TikTok. They talking about these women that are attending this class. It, they all fat and out of shape and unwanted and undesirable. <laughs> it's like, Lord Jesus. Just the, aren't you embarrassed? This is embarrassing. But this is what happens when you're this thirsty and desperate, sis. I don't know why it's so hard for some Black women to grasp this concept. So think about it. So remember back in school, remember that nerdy, awkward dude who was always, um, you know, desperate for your attention, wanted to carry your books, um, wanted to buy you lunch, who would bend over backwards and have bated breath and jump through hoops to get your attention and waiting for you to give him a chance. You didn't respect him, right? No, you didn't because he was desperate. He was too readily available. He was too accessible to you. That's how dusties look at you because they can sell you into slavery, fail to historically protect your children and your communities, abandon your children present day and create all these fatherless homes, collectively not provide any resources or infrastructure at all or anything of value and tell you you ain't shit, go viral every damn week for calling you fat, ugly, loud, and desperate and undesirable. And here you are taking D writing classes for him. This is that bird brain ish. This is what I'm talking about, y'all. Okay, so let's switch gears. Let's keep going. I want to talk about this bird brain, Bakisha, who lives a submissive lifestyle and takes orders from her Dusty while he's in prison, y'all. So this is bird brain, Becky. Child. So let's watch this and then we'll chat. Hey, submissive ladies. It's almost nine o'clock. That means it's time for my bedtime. Just wanted to come on here and show y'all how to properly go to bed as a submissive woman. Of course, first, I got to call daddy and get permission to go to bed. Everything you do gets ran by your man. That's the way to properly treat your king. Yes, sir. I apologize. I was just trying to get permission to go to bed, sir. I thought I told you to be in the bed myself. Yes, sir. But with all due respect, on the weekends, you said I could stay up till nine. Yes, sir. I understand, Daddy. Yes, sir. Thank you for letting me be a part of your life. Good night. When y'all heard, Daddy, it's time for bed. Good night. And shout out to Nika Knight, who did an, a more in-depth video about this chick. If you can't tell what's happening, we see bird brain by Keisha here looking a plum dumb fool. So her dusty Joe bird boyfriend is telling her what she can't and cannot do. He's talking about why did you call on me when I'm watching the game? He's also telling her what time to go to bed. And he's even telling her when she's allowed to use the bathroom. He's doing this all from prison, y'all. He's behind bars, y'all. So the nigga has nothing to show for himself. He don't got a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. All he has is two hots and a cot. And even that's owned by the prison that he's in. 
And he's sitting here barking orders at this chick, telling her what to do and what not to do. And the worst part is she's actually listening. Like, girl, he's Brad's property now. He is property of the state. State property. That's what they call them. Brad is telling him when he can shit or piss, when he can go out to the yard when it's lights out for him. I'd be damned if I take orders and be subjugated from someone who's already subjugated and who's behind bars. And apparently this dumb chick is out here working, paying bills on her own. She also has children as well that she's taking care of on her own. And she probably put money on his books. And she's sitting here listening to him tell her what to do. This is your bird brain. This is bird brain Becky, though. Y'all, I can't. So I want to get into this last story. And shout out to Brea who shared this with me of this bird brain dumb ass mammy who started a GoFundMe for her boyfriend after he was convicted of R-wording several women. Child, so this is a doozy. So there's a lot to unpack here. So let's start with the article, okay? And trigger warning, this next story includes references to assault and the victimization of Black women. So if that's something that you're particularly sensitive to, I would proceed with caution. So the article, here's the dusty. And the article is entitled, Smyrna Man Convicted of Rape, Convicted of R-Wording Kidnapping After Assaulting Woman at Knife Point, okay? And it says... A Cobb County man was convicted on multiple charges, including R-wording and kidnapping, for sexually assaulting a woman at knife point in her car at her apartment complex one morning in September. Patrick Anderson, 26, of Smyrna, was found guilty by a jury of R-wording, sodomy, kidnapping, and aggravated assault. Okay. According to the office, the case against Anderson began around 5.40 a.m., when he knocked on a woman's door at an apartment and asked to use her phone to call for roadside assistance. The woman allowed him to use her phone, but after Anderson ended the call, he tried to force his way into the apartment. The woman who was not harmed was able to push her door closed and lock Anderson out. Okay, so he attempted to do this and was unsuccessful the first time. Thank God the woman was able to push him out of her apartment. Okay, but he was determined to assault someone. So it says shortly after, just minutes later, at 545, the victim in the case, a 22-year-old woman living at the same apartment complex, left her unit and got in her car. The first woman who was on the phone with 911 told the dispatcher she could see him getting into the back seat of her neighbor's car. Once Anderson was in the car with the victim, he brandished a knife and told her to drive away. Eventually, he had her parked in front of a neighboring apartment building. Once they were parked, Anderson climbed into the front seat and ordered the woman to take off her clothes. He then sexually assaulted her. While she was being assaulted, the woman waited for an opportunity to use her Apple Watch to call 911. An emergency dispatcher answered, but their voice was loud enough for Anderson to hear it and freak out, the woman said during the trial. So Anderson threw the watch on the ground and began questioning the woman about the call. She denied that she made a call on a 911 and said she must have accidentally received an incoming call. During the dispute, another car pulled up alongside them, causing Anderson to begin looking for his knife, which he could not find. After not finding the knife, he left with the woman's keys, wallet, and watch. Okay child so he attempted to r word someone and failed ended up hopping in the car of a neighbor threatened her with a knife kidnapped her and r worded her and sodomized her okay so thank god this article describes how he was found guilty and was being punished for these heinous crimes well now fast forward his stupid ass pick me girlfriend started a go fund me for him okay so let's watch this in the yeah. chat so this girl is like a really popular fitness influencer on Instagram, right? And I just so happen to come across her boyfriend's GoFundMe. You see, he's more than a statistic. Um, exonerate Patrick. My favorite line is where it says, the judicial system has shown its immortality towards a man who has dedicated years to addressing and solving this exact issue. Like, yes, baby, you are more than a statistic. Strong black man. I don't know why nobody's told you this, but you and Patrick need to go to hell together. Because if you read the article, it's wild. He first goes to some woman's door at a complex, 
Asks to use her phone to call roadside assistance. She lets him, when he's done, hands the phone back and then tries to break into her apartment to assault her. She's strong enough to close him out. She called the police. And then she tells the police, I see him getting into someone else's car. He literally held another woman at knife point in her car and assaulted her. He did it! What you mean not another statistic? Homeboy made himself a statistic. That man clicked that tally mark himself. What are you talking about? Like, his GoFundMe has already reached over $1,000. He needs, I think, 40 grand. Stop donating to that shit. Y'all are wild. Knock it off. Y'all, and here is his bird brain ass girlfriend who started the GoFundMe. Okay. So this is them together. This is her with the rapist. All right. And the caption says, when I look back over the 10 years we have been together, I can see how God has prepared us both for this essential moment in our lives. I will continue to fight for my fiance to not spend 50 years of his life in prison for a crime he didn't commit. Do not ever put any circumstance above yourself. This whole system is so deeply flawed and I can't wait until we are able to share our story with the world. This is deeper than us and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else in life right now. We appreciate all of your support, positive energy and prayers. Hashtag is a fiance. Diamond ring emoji. Child. Oh, earth is ghetto. I want to leave. Earth is ghetto. I want to leave. Y'all, unsurprisingly, this bird brain pick me, mammy ass bitch. Turn the comments off. It's like, how foolish and idiotic and dumb do you look? Calling yourself the fiance of someone who has just been convicted of R wording someone. So you caping and coddling so much so that you're starting GoFundMe's for him. Not only are you a prison wife, you a grapist prison wife. Not only is your man a grapist, he's a broke grapist. You got to start GoFundMe's. And he's out here engaging in this degeneracy and your bird brain ass. Throw on the cape. Like Tanya TKO said, da, 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 it's super money. Caping and coddling and enabling this bull****. You should be ashamed of yourself. This man has threatened the lives of two innocent women even brutally sexually assaulted one at knife point. And you're sitting here complaining about the criminal justice system being biased after he was convicted of these heinous crimes. Like they didn't hear the firsthand accounts of these victims. Like they didn't have witnesses that testified to what they had seen and heard. Like they didn't administer rape kits and find his DNA evidence everywhere. So you sit here caping and enabling and coddling and making excuses for them R word is talking about the criminal justice system is immoral. Girl, go to hell. Really, seriously, supporting this demonic ish. And I can't imagine what these victims are going through to be victimized and traumatized in this manner, not knowing if we're going to survive such a tragic event. Or if he's going to end your life, you know, being brutally assaulted with a knife, surviving that ordeal, having to go through the process of telling the authorities, feeling embarrassment and the shame that victims go through, experiencing the PTSD and being forced to suffer through a trial. On top of that, in the midst of all this, seeing someone who comes from where they come from, looks and talks like them, is a black woman like them, deny their experiences. And proceed to start a GoFundMe defending this fool. This is why I go so hard defending Black women on my channel. Because this is the bull-ish we're subjected to daily in this community. As a matter of fact, I just received an email the other day from a little girl who said that she was assaulted. And that she told her parents. And they told her she's lying and she's just promiscuous. Y'all, divest from this nonsense. Divest or die, y'all. It's not an option at this point. This shit is fuck the fuck up. You either going to lose your life or your mind messing with these crazy ass people. It's fucked up, y'all. All right, that's all I got. Until next time, see you guys. Bye.
if y'all come across a red iPhone, can you please bring it to the sound stage? Red iPhone, appreciate it.